Hi you guys, welcome back to Erie Covenant Witches. How are you today? Well, we are going to be discussing types of witches and types of magic in this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So let's jump right into it. Um, I did some research and even found a few types of magic that uh, is not frequently heard of. There are, of course, many different types, many different umbrellas out there, but it would be very hard to list all of them. But if I didn't list one here, feel free to list it in the comments. So the first one is an eclectic. An, ecle an eclectic, sorry, which they embrace all types of magic. They're not tied down to one path and with their magical practice it's kind of a bit of everything. Two, you have African, an umbrella term for magic performed in Africa such as voodoo and etc. Three, you have Alexandrian, founded in the 1960s in Britain based on ritual and ceremonial magic. Then we have five, angel witch. Witches who contact angels and divine beings. Now, an angel witch can be both dark and light. They can work with dark angels. They can work with light angels. And six, animists, nature witch. They are very in tune with plants, animals, and nature all around them. They feel it. They just love nature and they're very nature based. Seven, an art witch. A witch who uses art as their medium. Eight, Arthurian witch. One who bases their magic off legends of King Arthur. Nine, Astarte. One who uses occult order working with Greek goddess of fertility and war. Okay guys, now we have an ast astrology witch. I love working with astrology. A witch who uses astrology with their magic and lifestyle, but don't we all to some point use astrology in our magic? You'll find that a lot of these um, we all kind of use. So, number 11, an augury witch. This is a witch who uses omen signs, symbols and I do this all the time as well. If I see a crow close to me um, and I, it pulls me toward it, I feel like it's an omen from my deity, for example. So 12, a British traditional, a British witch who traditionally uses local magic and lore. I hear that they, in Britain, every year have a giant witch festival, and once I get over there, I am so going to attend that. And probably put it on here. 13. Celtic Witch. The study and worship of ancient Celtic deities, mythology, lore, earth magic, and ceremonial rites. 14. A Ceremonial Witch. This is a term of practitioners who use high magic. 15. A Chaos. Now this could be a Chaos Witch or Chaos Magic, however you want to look at it. It's all types of blends of magic based on the belief in only magic's use. So they kind of just pull from any direction any magic, they use anything. 16. A crystal witch. Witches who focus on crystals in their magic. I've met a lot of crystal witches. 17. A druid. Practitioners of ancient Celtic traditions. Gaia. Now this one is based on the earth and the traditions of old European magic. And at number 19, we have Eco-Pagan. That is a activist who uses magic to defend the earth, which that's pretty cool, I think. 
20 Egyptian magical witches who used the ancient Egyptian deities and strong ma magical arsenal. My son, he is about to be 14, and this is the path that he is choosing. I think it's pretty cool. And it's been interesting trying to help him along with that. 21, an elemental witch. This is a witch who, of course, works with all of the elements. 22, European. This is an umbrella term for European magical tradition. And 23, we have fairy witches. Witches who work with the fae and their realms and magic. Um, I want to start doing that as well. I hear a lot of uh, witches starting to work with the fae and that's some one thing that I don't think I've done too much in my practice. 24, folk witch. Works with folklore and British or Celtic traditions. I do that. 25, old Wicca or Gardnerian. Wicca based on the teachings of gardeners, writings, and traditions. 26, a green witch. They work with gardening and herbalism. 27 is a healer, a witch who uses only healing magic. Then you have a hedge witch at 28. Solitary witch who uses herbs, potions, and brews. 29, Hellenic witch. The worship of Greek goddesses and gods. And at 30, we have a hereditary witch. Woo woo! <laughs> Traditions and magic handed down the family line, unique to each family. Let me know in the comments if you are a hereditary witch as well. 31, left hand path. Witches who ignore and reject the norm of magical practice and engage in what is taboo to other witches. I do this and I get a lot of judgment for uh, kind of straying to the dark side, uh, working with demons, starting all of that, so, you know. 32. Lounge Witch. One who only uses magic at home. 33. Is a Luciferian. Those who believe Lucifer is the bringer of light, and they invoke and worship him. 34. Lunar. Works with the lunar cycles only. 35. Norse. This is based on ancient Scandinavia or Viking beliefs. 36. Neo-Pagan. That's an umbrella that refers to the New Age Earth-based magic. 37. Satanic. A cult of defiance against the church, society, and traditional magic. 38. Sea Witch. Water-based magic. 39. Solitary. Solitary witches usually practice alone, and they go their own way, and they're very silent about their work. And at 40, we have Wicca. That's modern paganism founded in England in the 20th century. And then we have a traditional witch, one who does not believe in the harm none law and traditionally follows a path of ancient traditions, and they may use things like voodoo, hoodoo, and other old forms of magic. 50, a white witch, only uses white magic, gray witch. uses both dark and light magic. And 52, a black witch uses only dark magic. And at 53, we have a warlock, which means traitor. A warlock is not a male witch. A male witch is a male witch. Um, a warlock is somebody who betrays their coven. So we all use different forms of these and mix and match, and that's okay. The truth is we really don't need labels. Use all the different forms of magic you want, to your will, or you are not a witch. Do not let these overwhelm you. Choose what you are drawn to and study it. The rest will fall into place for you. I know a lot of new witches are overwhelmed by what path they should take, 
I say go with the one that draws you in the most and research that first. And once you know all you can know about that, go to the next. Eventually you're going to fall into your path. Mine kind of found me. I started off with Wicca many years ago when I was like 16. And eventually I ended up as a traditional gray witch. So really you don't know how it's going to end up. You feel it. It's something that comes to you. I believe anyway in my opinion. Well good luck and that's another video from Eerie Covenant with Love and Light.